Hey guys, it's Alana Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is another video I'm doing for my survey tech, Michaela. She's going to learn how to fill out elevation certificates tomorrow with me, but I wanted to do a training video for her. So uh, I'm going to run through this form fairly quick. I'm going to try and keep this to about 10 minutes. It's just kind of an overview. We're actually not going to input any data. Um, I will point out that the folks at FEMA actually have a set of eight training videos. Um, you can find this on YouTube. I'm also going to try and remember to link to it in the description for this video when I post it online. But um, there are, uh, you know, there's an hour, hour and a half worth of videos here uh, that show you how to fill out each section, and they also identify kind of some typical issues um, that people have with elevation certificates. So this is a great resource. Uh, the folks at FEMA do do a good job on their education. So I just wanted to point this out. All right, but here's your Redefine Horizons crash course. So before we start, let's just talk about uh, what's an elevation certificate and why do we do them? So an elevation certificate is a form that is prepared by a surveyor to uh, certify the elevation of uh, a structure. Okay, And it's that the elevations of a structure, different parts of a structure, in relation typically to what we call base flood elevation. So uh, the, the top of a floodplain or uh, a floodwaters. Um, and so the, the, the form is used to certify to either uh, the local floodplain official or FEMA or a insurer, somebody that's going to provide flood insurance, that uh, a structure is either above or below the floodplain, and uh, the surveyor really doesn't have any control over that. <laughs> you just, if you're as the surveyor, you just you go out, you do the survey, and then you kind of report what you find. Okay, now there is another process you can go through to actually pull out the actual property, actual land out of a flood zone. That's going to be done with a LOMA or a LOMAR. The elevation certificate is really made for structures. Okay, we're pulling a stru so we're most of the time we're doing an elevation certificate. We're trying to sh prove to FEMA or an insurer that a structure is outside of the floodplain. Um, although sometimes we know the structure is in the floodplain, and we're just doing an elevation certificate so the insurer can understand uh, what parts of the structure are in the floodplain and how deep the water is, and they use that to to rate the flood insurance policy. Okay, you always want to make sure you get the the most current. Um, most current version of the form. This is the 2019 version. It comes with the instructions. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here to the first part. It's a fillable PDF, thankfully. Okay, so uh, we're just going to go through these section by section. So section A, property information. Put the building owner name here. If you know it, um, we, we're not going to put um, either of these because we're not an insurance company. You're going to put in the street address, city, state, zip. Okay, property description, lot, block, Okay, tax number, legal description, etc. This in my shop is almost always the APN we put in here. Okay, the building use. Uh, so you're going to say, is it residential, commercial? What are, what are we doing? Okay, you're going to put in a latitude, longitude here. Okay, and we will normally pull that off. You, you could get it off of Google Earth, but at my shop, we'll pull that off of um, our TBC network project because we, we almost ever do everything on state plane here almost always. So. We'll put in the lat long. We're always at my shop going to check, check NAD 1983. We don't do NAD 27 here. That's the horizontal datum. Okay, uh, we, we, I took lots of photos. We always do that, so we'll attach photos at the end. Okay, this is really important, the building diagram number. And you have to look at the instructions to pick the right building diagram number. Okay, and let's see. So here's your building diagram numbers. Okay, and I, I would always, at my folks, I want them to talk to the actual surveyor that, that's going to sign the certificate because this is really critical. This is the most important part of the, probably the most important part of the certificate. If you screw this up, everything else gets screwed up. So you want to be very careful when you pick your building diagram. Okay, so get your help, get help from your LS when you do that. Uh, that's the uh, building diagram right here, number, you're going to put that number in. Okay, then if there's a scroll crawl space, you have to get the square footage of the crawl space, uh, the number of permanent flood openings, which your, your crew has to look for when they're on site, the net area of the flood openings, okay, and then you got to say are they engineered or not. Okay, I'm not going to get into detail on that, but your, your field crew should be trained to figure this stuff out. Okay, if there's an attached garage, you got to put in the square footage of the garage, the number of openings in the garage, the area of the openings, if they're engineered or not. Okay, so that's the information that goes in Section A. Okay, Section B is information you're going to pull from the flood insurance rate map, community name, community number, county name, state, 
map panel number, suffix, the date of the firm, the revision date if it has one, the flood zone that you're in, and the base flood elevation if you have a numbered A zone or another type of flood zone that has a, has a base flood elevation shown on the map. Sometimes you have to calculate this if you're on a, on a river system. Okay, then you gotta say, what's the source of your base flood information? At my shop, that will almost always be either a firm or flood insurance profile. Could be one of these two. We don't typically use these other two. Um, if you're gonna check one of these other two boxes, make sure you talk to your license surveyor. They need to know what you're doing here. Okay, the datum, vertical datum for the elevations for us is almost always gonna be in NAV 1988. If you're gonna check one of these other boxes, you gotta, you gotta talk to your surveyor. Um, then you want to know, is the building located in the Coastal Barrier Resource System or otherwise protected area? Uh, for, for us, most of the time, that's going to be no. But if you're, if you're close to the coast, you want to check that. All right, so then we go down. Let's see. We're in a new section here. Yeah, section. Um, okay, so at the top of each form, you got to re-put in the address. But now in section C, this is where you actually put the elevations that came from the field survey. So... You're going to say, almost always for us, our building elevations are on finished construction. Okay, and then we're going to put in uh, the benchmark that we used, which in our case is usually going to be a core station. The vertical datum is going to be NAVD88. Right here, check NAVD88. Okay, and then you have to uh, enter the elevations off the field notes. Okay, so you're going to enter those in. We are always in feet. Okay, then this last section, section D here, this is going to be my name, license number, my job title, company name, address, city, state, zip, signature date, telephone, and any comments. We will usually almost always have comments here that will go in here, okay? Now for the rest of this, <clears throat> we don't typically uh, fill this out, okay? So these are, in if you're in a special zone, so zone AO or zone A without a BFE, you gotta complete this, okay? And um, if you're, um, let's see, and also if you're gonna do a Loma or a Loma R. Um, so we do not typically fill this section out. If you're gonna fill this section out, you need to come get help from your surveyor. Okay, and then the final section here, this is the, the property owner info. We'll fill this out if we know it. And then, um, and then the owner needs to sign it. Okay, and then again, we don't fill this out. This is optional community information. Um, you know, sometimes you'll have somebody, the local floodplain administrator, so that your county or city may fill that out. Okay, then we put in our photographs here. Okay, um, so I believe it'll let you it'll let you click and sometimes it'll it might if I have this open in my PDF viewer it might let us actually clip and upload those. Otherwise you got to kind of crop them in. Okay, and that's basically it. That's basically the elevation certificate form. That's kind of a high level overview. Um, Definitely know what you're doing when you fill these out. If you have any questions at all, check with your license survey that's going to fill out the form. That's a quick overview, quick, crack, quick, quick crash course. Check out those uh, other videos from, from FEMA. Uh, it's a good playlist they put together. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, I'll try, if I remember, I'll do another video when the elevation certificate's uh, filled out. We'll, we'll take a few minutes and, and go through that. And uh, I'll show you what a completed certificate looks like. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.